Okay folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. This is the second video in my series of four which explain how to build a Spitfire Mark IX flight stick with spade grip. And last time we had just completed the spade unit and now we're adding this angle bracket. And the spring at the bottom gives us the rotational resistance. So, let's get started. And this is what we're starting with. This is what we got to at the end of the first video. Our spade grip with fire button, brake lever and some wires. And we're going to be adding the angle bracket which will mount underneath like this. And there is the roll bearing which will allow the, the roll pivot to, uh, to happen. So those are the parts that are printed. And then we have some hardware, which I've put here, so it's a little easier for me to pick these pieces out with my fat fingers. Uh, a bearing, quite a chunky bearing. Apparently they use for washing machines quite a lot. And our trusty cube magnets and um, uh, little spring, sensor, and uh, a few bits and pieces. Anyway, we'll go through them as we encounter them. So, first things first. We're going to just have a look at the base of this spade grip, because we're going to be screwing some machine screws or bolts into them. And they're going to sort of screw in like this. However, I've already uh, prepare this a little bit and I'll show you what I did because what happens is this is printed on the print bed that way up and it means that the very first layer is this which is why it's kind of shiny and quite clean but what tends to happen when you print the first layer is it squishes a little bit and uh, the the diameter of the hole which needs to be a four millimeter screw diameter just tends to narrow a fraction on that very first sort of 0.1 mil so a good trick before you, just early on, is to just open. I mean, sometimes you just want to just do that a little bit and just open it out. Um, but then just make sure that you can get the screw in there and it'll be easier to fit later on. We've done that now. I'll put my bits there. So the next thing we're going to do is feed the wires through. Now it's going that way and the wires are going to be threaded down these two channels and out the bottom there. Now there's a little trick to this as well. The hole is fairly tight, there's not a lot of spare in there, so what I find works best to avoid the wires catching is feed one wire in, thread it through a little bit, feed another wire in, thread it through a little bit, and then another wire in, and then thread that through a little bit, and then we're feeding all three together. But it means that one will pop out first, rather than all three of them bunching at the end trying to sort of negotiate a little little bend, which there is. A couple of bends, in fact. So let's just feed these through. You might kink a little bit sometimes. You just a little bit of back and forth, just slide them back and forth. If you get a little bit of resistance. There we go. So we've got the blue one coming out now. Now if I grab that blue one and just feed some more in, then the blue will help drag everything else through. So let's just do that. We've got the red one starting to appear here. Yep, we've got the red one out now as well. So let's drag the red and the blue, and that should help pull the white one through. There it is, there's the white one. So we've got all three wires in there. So let's repeat that on the other side. Just start with one. I'll just show you there what's happening. Start with the one, and then add a second one, and then the third one, and then just feed them through. Don't have them overlapping each other. Okay, so there's one, that went through quite easy. Okay, now I will just Straighten these up a little bit. Okay, 
we're just about there. Now the final little bit here as we close the gap up. Okay, so those are the wires threaded through. And we will now fix these, fix the spade to the angle bracket very securely with 20 millimeter M4 countersunk screws. Two of them. And for one of them, we can use this trusty 3D printed screwdriver. Nice and quick. The other one, though, I find that the the spacer bell is a little bit tight to get this 3D printed screwdriver in. So you're going to have to use a, a normal screwdriver. And again, it will have to be a uh, PH2. And that just gives you the... There we go. Absolutely. Strong as houses. Right. Getting there now. So let's turn this over and have a look at the other side because this is where the roll bearing will go and we will be using these pieces here. Let us start with the bearing itself. That sits inside a case like that and then this peg will go inside the middle thread through it. But first I just I find that it's a lot easier if you just check that this peg seats properly inside the housing at the back of the angle bracket. Just check you know how that goes in and that it does go in you might need to sort of wiggle it a bit. Yeah that's what we're looking for nice and strong. Okay so we know that that goes in it doesn't need any tidying up and it's cleaning off Let's think about the magnet now. So we're going to use one of our trusty magnets and we have to use the same trick as last time. Oh, everything wants to stick to this today. There it is, there it is. So we want to detect the North Pole again and we want to use our trick so that the, the blue is the south so the end of the screwdriver now is the North. And as was before, there is a tiny dimple on the back of this peg, and it's up there, and that's where the north should go. So I need to just align that. Ah, oh, now it jumped a bit, and I just feel a little unsure if I've lost it. So let's just make sure. If you do put it in and think, ah, right, I'm, is that really right? There's a hole all the way through and you can just push it out again. So let's just make sure I've got this in. Right, there it is, okay. So that is... That's there. We're good now. Let us put the peg inside the bearing. That is a firm fit. And before we put the case or the back on, it's time to put our hole sensor in. Now the hole sensor pops in here, like that, goes through a little bit, and then we just bend the, pen, the pins back into these channels. And then just press them down a bit. Right, let's put the back of the case on now. And we need another 20 mil M4 countersunk screw and a couple more. I'll just put them in quickly for now. Okay, nice and strong. Great. That is a nice, sturdy unit. Now, let me just say something about this. This is what I call a Maghall 6003. In fact, you can see there, written on the 
the seal it's a 6003 so that's a 6003 bearing I think this is a Dunlop bearing but there's, it's a standard item that cost about a pound um, and this entire unit now is quite a useful component that you can put in anything that you want to uh, well like a flight stick or, or something else that you want to have rotation on and with a sensor know its position. A slight variation of this is the one that is, is more useful because I have another one which is a 6003F for friction and that incorporates a friction pad. Now that's a very useful item because we can use that in a trim wheel um, actually slightly different in a trim wheel um, doesn't use a magnet in the trim wheel uh, but a flap handle very useful certainly a throttle quadrant um, all three of the levers in a throttle quadrant uh, radiator flaps um, all sorts of things so these mag hole units are, are fantastic you can just drop them in and quickly make a case design a lever and produce all kinds of uh, useful controls with them okay it's time to wire up this mag hole 6003 there it is again we're using the standard RBW red blue white wiring and I will in fact I'll just to sort of show you how it's easy it is to take off the uh, the wrapper the, the cable sheath on these um, I'll use these ends which are currently just just cut and uh, unexposed on the wires so we'll start it's an RBW red on the left just a bit of fingernail that's all you need and a twist and then we'll pick one of these up and thread it over the, uh, the cable and we will slide it onto the first of the pins there it is let's just press the there we go very nice press the ferrule into the channel and then crush it into place that's got it. Next one. RBW. Ooh, just, just take some off there. A bit more. Give it a twist. Thread it on. Onto the end of the sensor leg. And then press it into the channel. That's got it. And then the cable itself should just fit into that channel and just be a, a snug fit. Okay, that's all three. Now those wires will be held even more firmly when they're pressed into the case because they will be pressed down and bolted against the panel underneath and that little bit of, of silicon that's sticking above there will just press snugly and uh, make everything nice and secure. Okay, almost finished. Time to fit that D peg against the mounting inside of our flight stick. So we know how this should go. It's hopefully a snug fit. Might take a little bit of wriggling to get it. There it is. That's in. wire collections building up isn't it and then we just need to hold the D peg in shape with a 14 millimeter M4 countersunk machine screw there it is so that is that is that so we will be having this sort of movement it's about 35 40 degrees in total on each side ah one more thing that i forgot is that we there will be a spring at the bottom of this flight stick and it will provide the resistance the roll resistance and the spring will bear against this 3 mil dowel pin and we will be holding that dowel pin in place it'll be slotted into here and then 
held with this retaining peg plate. Now what you might find is because of the way that this angle bracket is printed, the hole might just be a little bit slightly off the 3 mil that you need and you might find that you can't easily sort of press this peg into it. So I find the easy way to just sort of seat it and make that make sure that the hole just sort of fits it is put the dowel peg in there and just sort of press it and there you go that's got it in. So that's held quite nicely in there and then we can put the spring over and that's then got this retaining plate holding everything in place and that's using two, using two 10 millimeter let's drop this over there 10 millimeter long M4 countersunk machine screws so let's just drop those in that's good and strong brilliant okay so now we can see things coming together we've got quite a wire collection here we have our spring and that will be resisting the roll action of the flight stick and in the next video we'll be connecting it up to the case and in fact you can see where that spring is held in the case. So come back and join me on the next video.